may want to get in there and change the points at which alarms occur, where interlocks occur, uh, things that you normally optimize as part of startup and commissioning. And then once it's all figured out and it's, it's set, you kind of tuck them away. And you still may want to get in there and adjust it from time to time. Operators might come back and say, hey, hey, Bob, you got this pump interlock in a 15%, but if you, if you drop it to 12, that allows me to do something over here that's really helpful. And then we bring that up, we make that change, and, and we go through uh, what's called a management of change to, to make a process setting change, which I don't want to talk about in this series, but maybe we can get into that later. Um, and, and then, uh, and then put, tuck the screen back away so they don't accidentally inter interface with it, and it's not something they normally need to deal with. So um, share display, normally accessible to the operator. There you have it with a line through it. That's the one I use uh, most of the time because, after all, if it's a graphic symbol, it should be evident and accessible to the, to the operator, to, to folks that need to run the plant. Um, you have a shared display function from a remote location. Um, you may have situations where you have very complex control systems that uh, share information remotely and um, it's a bit of a um, a detail uh, regarding the line and, and double lines what's remote what's not remote uh, in my instances I like to work with control systems that provide the ability for example to access and at least view uh, over the internet that's a very common thing now um, and so in some cases the remote display functionality will be shared with what the operator is seeing. Um, you could be anywhere in the world if you have an internet connection. So arguably you could use that symbol for that type of representation. And, um, but uh, I, I, I don't get into too much of using that because it's, uh, it doesn't really provide the folks who need to work with P&Is uh, the information they need when they generally pick them up, which is generally in the field after you're done and the, the, all the details for when that's important are really entered in at the front end design when you're programming it and doing it and that's when you're speaking to the folks that are programming it and they understand what's remote and what's what's not <clears throat> a couple other symbols that uh, while well, I'm on the point of symbols that I don't normally use because uh, it's just the way uh, I like to run the, the design group uh, PLC functions. Um, this this square uh, with a diamond inside of it could be used to tag functionality, programming logic that's used in a PLC system, and uh, it could be very helpful to programmers. I've seen it on many PNIs, but I can tell you that when I look at a PNID with this square symbol and a diamond in it, and some obscure tag that's referencing logic, it is meaningless to me, and I ignore it. I understand, as well as anybody who's picking up a set of PNIDs, that the system is probably controlled by some PLC or DCS or, or PAC automated controller, PC-based. Um, that's clear. So when it comes to using that symbol, I don't want to say it's, it shouldn't be used. That's, that, that certainly would be uh, out of place on my part to express my opinion. But my opinion is largely based on the value of symbols uh, where operations is concerned. If, if an operator could not understand what that means by looking at it, then you certainly couldn't reference a, a lead sheet on it, on what that tag means, um, then why put it on there? Because it's just going to encumber him with something that's, that's confusing and, and, and it's not of any value. And by the same token, uh, I almost never use these, but uh, in some cases I have seen them used to reference uh, computers and control systems and more complex systems where you want to reference uh, functionality in some sort of structured manner that allows uh, instrumentation controls maintenance folks to dig into the details when it comes time to maybe troubleshoot something that's not working or to understand a little bit more about the functionality of a control system and, and again you need to reference uh, the uh, control system documents to get there the last three pieces of symbology that are commonly used on 
instrument symbols are reset, interlock, and purge. And without a doubt, the the symbol that I use the most often because re showing resets or purges of, of loops or resetting a PID for, for a new condition or, or, or any kind of additional advanced functionality that might go in, again, is not something that I find very helpful in my PNIs, but a very common aspect of controls that you that is very intuitive and, and, and often found is the concept of interlocks. And an interlock may apply in a number of cases. Um, a very common one is when you are in the field and you have a hand switch that is in the off position. And so when it's off, the, the equipment cannot be operated from the computer system and that represents a main interlock to the motor. And there's your interlock. So if somebody back at the control system tries to start the motor, but it's in off, the interlock will essentially prevent that from happening. And interlocks are, are used throughout systems to uh, provide um, start-stop functionality, overrides. Uh, it may provide uh, valve open-close permissions, um, and any one of a number of things. But uh, that's, uh, that's a very common aspect of, in use of the interlock symbol. So if I come back here to my lead sheet, what I have here is I referenced in the actual four-part series back at connected.com. I go over the use of these. You've seen a lot of the examples here and how they're applied. Uh, you've seen the instrument symbols. I talk about the use of the computing function identification in the series, so I'm not going to go over that right here other than to say I don't use it a lot. I do use it when, for example, you would have multiple level elements on the same vessel or more commonly in my field, it's very common to have multiple pH ORP elements measuring the same stream. Uh, if one goes off or, or, or the probe becomes fouled, it's hard to know what is the right reading. So you may use this symbol to show the difference between a couple meters that are out in the field and you might use that information to alarm or notify operations. Hey, these two devices that are measuring the same thing on a very critical stream are in disagreement with each other and they're off by some, some level threshold value that, that may provide an alarm or the system may take action to a safe state based on what is the, uh, the safest t action to take when two devices are, are not in agreement based on the, the process, how, the nuances of the process. For example, if a, if a tank is filling up and one meter is saying, hey, it's 50 percent, the other meter is saying it's 98, you may want to take the action to stop filling the tank, even though you're not sure which one's right, because the, uh, the greater harm would be to overflow the vessel, potentially. Or maybe not. But uh, anyway, that's an example where a difference may be used, uh, high and low limits. Um, uh, oftentimes I'll use an averager to average a couple and I say often not that's probably the second most commonly used where I'm averaging something um, another common one that I've used in the past is uh, proportional control where you're simply indicating that something's being uh, rated based on input in a simple uh, proportional manner um, the others you'll see used um, in examples on ISA's uh, standards uh, for the, the type of meter and controls that are being applied. And um, I uh, have not seen a lot of that applied on actual PNIDs for real, real work, although they are helpful to know in terms of the, the fundamental aspects of your, your control, controller and its interface with uh, the software system. So let me just close out this portion on instrument symbols by 
talking a little bit about the abbreviations. These are covered in my actual text series, and they're pretty self-evident that, uh, for example, the AI, we've, we've talked about those. Here's an example of an AI coming off a specific gravity uh, Coriolis flow meter. The Coriolis is sure. Coriolis flow meter will show uh, gravity, flow, temperature, and um, and so you have this uh, analog input, uh, multiple uh, multiple inputs coming off of Coriolis when it's used in an analog manner, um, and then some of these other ones uh, for like fail states of valves. Uh, you can see here fail closed. In this instance, we have a valve uh, diaphragm valve air supply instrument air that uh, fails closed if it loses air, which means it probably got a spring built into it. Um, so with uh, with that, um, I I used to use these uh, symbols inside some of my P and Is to actually provide additional information on where various alarms and set points, what they do. Uh, it's, it's completely uh, a nuance of the way I used to do drawings. I don't do that so much anymore because a lot of times the, the symbol just doesn't have room for that. But uh, it was helpful at times when operators would just want to glance and say, hey, you know, where's the starts and stops and, and what, are, what do all these level switches mean and, and what are they running? And so I used to put them on there and, and then I've stopped doing it and now it's referenced in the control description itself and I provide tables. But it's just something that uh, I've used to do and um, it's something that you, you may or may not think is helpful. So let me just close out this first, uh, this first series on the P&I with the instrument symbols. The second one we'll come back and we'll talk about the rest of the things on the, on the lead sheet and um, and then we'll move on to the second lead sheet. So thanks a lot.